as a matter of principle, I supported uh, Senator Patrick's motion to refer a reference and inquiry to the Senate uh, Defence, Foreign Affairs and Trade Committee. It is very clear that post Wuhan coronavirus, it cannot be business as usual with the communist regime in Beijing. I think that at this point in time, it is appropriate and timely. I have been a long standing uh, critic, I have been long standing in my criticisms of the communist regime in uh, China, and consistent with that view, I thought it was appropriate for me to support uh, this motion. I mean, let's not forget, Tom, that just this morning, mm. the President of the Senate uh, is celebrating 50 years of the committee and the establishment of the committee system uh, here uh, in our Senate. And he lauded the work that has been done over 50 years. And so, therefore, as the primary chamber, as he indicated, and given the success of our committee system, I think that it's more than appropriate for us right. to look at uh, this relationship and into the future. Anything that this, this committee, though, would talk about in terms of the relationship or decide would be headlines, would be big headlines and could further inflame the relationship. I mean, you do concede the traditional avenue is this is for the government to handle this type of, let's be honest, diplomacy. Well, Tom, that's a matter for the government. We are a Senate and accordingly our Senate has from time to time over 50 years uh, undertaken controversial inquiries and so therefore it's appropriate for us to look into this issue as it is for us to look into a whole range of other issues. But Tom, can I come back to the point? It cannot be business yeah. as usual uh, post Wuhan virus and I have been very strong on that. I've called for us to decouple uh, from China to reduce our dependency on the communist regime. I've even looked at uh, looking at potential compensation and some plan. The reality is we need a plan to move forward here. And right. whether it's in the area of foreign investment, in very different areas. I mean, let's not forget that the activities of the communist regime in Australia has been insidious at times. And one only has to look at what uh, Alex Josky uh, just released a couple of days ago, the Aspie mm. paper, which looks at uh, the activities of the communist regime in Australia. So I think Australians do expect that post-virus the situation does change. And I think it's important right. for so us to examine the whole gamut of this relationship. So just on the trade element, though, when you say decouple, China's obviously going to be a customer, if you like, of Australia. It's, they buy a lot of what we sell, even if you just look at iron ore. Are you saying to reduce artificially, to enforce a reduction of the percentage of our trade, for example, with China? Because the government says, well, we do our bit, we open up free trade agreements and avenues, and then eventually, if China's an unreliable partner these producers will shift partners. Are you saying this needs to be the force of hand from government to reduce the amount of trade we do with China? Tom, uh, it is not a good business model to put a third of your trade eggs in one basket. A third of our exports uh, are now with the communist regime. 26.4% of our two-way trade uh, is with China. Um, what we have seen during the pandemic is the need for our economy to uh, reduce its dependency on overseas supply chains. And that, of course, includes our dependency uh, on the trade relationship with China. I think it's important for us to mm. diversify. I mean, when you look at, Tom, the things that we import uh, from China, everyday household items. And there is now a legitimate question as to whether some of those items ought not to be made in Australia. There will be, no doubt, a push for a made in Australia uh, framework. And we have seen comments from the government in relation to to that, and I support that. But the reality is, Tom, right. it is not a good business model. But having said that, um, let's not forget that what we do export to China, particularly uh, iron ore and coal, is vitally important to the economic growth of China right. and in addition yeah, just... to feeding its 1.3 billion people. 
Yeah, now of course, China trades with us because so they it benefits I have, them. We know that. I have no doubt. I just doubts. want to ask you finally. Yeah, so we're nearly out of time, Senator. Can I just ask you finally one other sector, the university sector, because you spoke about you know government assistance might be needed. It's going to be pretty hard for this sector to find the same number of international students, even over a few years. What's the solution there? Well, for a start, the business. Uh the university sector ought to take heed of what's being taught in their own business schools, which is you don't put all your eggs in one basket. And so, therefore, I think this is an opportunity for the university sector and for those universities that have diversified. International students are important, but so is diversification of the source of those students, and we've seen some successes around Australia. The problem has come here for those universities that have pr pretty much... Uh, saw the rivers of gold with Chinese students and predominantly Chinese students. And so now the avenues uh, for All those right. universities have to be diversified.